Welcome back. These are the speed dates of Cremona Musica 2020. This is the first of the two days of this special edition of this new version of the traditional fair, the central music fair in the city of Cremona. This special edition takes place here in the auditorium Giovanni Arvedi, always in, in Cremona, and we are looking at new instruments presented by luthiers and presented by special creators that are uh, changing one by one, uh, presenting and making their instruments uh, play sound. Now it's time to introduce another one, so let me welcome Heiliger's Violin House. Hello, my name is Matthias Heiliger's. I'm you can stay close, you can stay close to the microphone okay. so we can hear. Perfect. Hello, my name is Matthijs Heiligers. I'm um, a violin maker from Cremona. I've been working in Cremona now since 1975, so practically 45 years. But um, originally I'm from Holland. I came to Cremona, obviously because of the enormous importance that Cremona has for violin making in the world. And since then, I've remained here because it's an extremely inspiring uh, city to be in and uh, an environment also very important. It inspires uh, the maker to uh, produce his instruments. Uh, today, I'm very, very happy to be here in the auditorium of the Valin Museum, um, which is a particularly a nice concert hall with a superb acoustic. So it's the, um, the very best place to try out instruments. Uh, obviously, we hear um, antique instruments very regularly here, the Stradivari, Guarneri, and Amati instruments from the museum. But it's also very good to realize how good modern instruments can be. Today, I, um, I'll introduce you to two important musicians who will play on an instrument made by me. To begin, uh, there's Maestro Armando Barilli. He's a viola player, and he is the principal viola player of the Turin uh, Teatro Regio Orchestra. Some time ago, he contacted me that his orchestra uh, was going to perform the Tristan and Isotte opera by Richard Wagner. Now, Richard Wagner, um, uh, uh, precisely wants a very big viola, actually a viola tenore, to play the solo parts in this opera. So uh, Maestro Barilli asked me to make him a viola tenore. I used the model of uh, the very important and famous Brothers Amati viola, which is now on show in Oxford. This instrument was made in 1592. And I made the viola for Maestro Barilli, which he has been playing since then and he is very happy with. Um, and today he will perform for you uh, a very nice piece which really highlights the qualities of this instrument. Um, it's the Elegy by Benjamin Britten, played by Armando Barilli on the viola tenore.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For this beautiful performance of the elegy by um, Benjamin Britten, written for solo viola, and um, it uh, highlights in more, uh, very particularly the characteristics of this instrument. We are talking about a very big viola, a tenor viola is a big size viola, 45 centimeters of body length, and this gives a very particular sound. Now, it might seem that uh, such a big instrument is hard to, um, uh, is hard to play because the, the size is so huge. But as you could have seen, Maestro Barili didn't have the slightest problem to play it because it has been made with particular measurements to the neck to make it playable and for the weight to give it a perfect balance. This instrument, like all the other instruments that I make, uh, are ma uh, is made with very old, long seasoned uh, material, which makes the instrument very resonant and also lightweight, which is good. An instrument shouldn't be thin, it should have the correct amount of wood to um, have the correct amount of resonance, but it shouldn't be too heavy, and especially viola should never be too heavy. So um, using very antique wood, I have in my workshop materials that are dating back even to the 19th century, um, which uh, gives the instrument a very particular sound, helps the instrument to become a good instrument. Now, um, I would like to invite Maestro Siskovic um, to play uh, a piece on, on a violin that I have made. Maestro Siskovic, uh, very well-known uh, soloist. Um, I'm very happy that uh, he's, he today was available to play for me in this beautiful hall one of my violins. And uh, as Mr. Siskovic has been touring uh, extensively with the solo sonatas by Tartini, uh, I asked him to perform one of these pieces today here for you in the auditorium of Cremona. He will begin with uh, the theme and um, variations by Tartini for solo violin and uh, then he will continue with maybe some other movements. The violin that he will be playing was made uh, four years ago um, on my uh, golden period Stradivari model, which is one of the models that I use most, gives a lot of satisfaction. And uh, I hope you will enjoy and appreciate the characteristics and the qualities of this violin uh, in the hands of Maestro Siskovic.
Thank you very much, Maestro Siskovic. Uh, this is very beautiful. I hope uh, you have some more pieces by Tartini to be able to, to highlight um, to be able to highlight the qualities of this violin. I hope you will uh, play some more for us. Uh, the acoustics of this hall uh, makes the sound very beautiful indeed. You told me today that compared this violin to your own Guadagnini, which of course is a very important and very famous violin, um, uh, you told me that some interesting characteristics are that this violin is so easy to play compared to your Guadagnini. Mm. This is true. This is true. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is a good compliment, obviously, because the violin should help the musician in his uh, difficult job as a performing artist. But um, now let's let's hear some more of the violin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Maestro Siskovic. Maybe I can tell two things about the violin. To illustrate the violin, because each instrument, as we know, is different. And um, it's not only a matter of model. Uh, there are many details which make an instrument uh, different from another. And therefore, um, I find it particularly pleasing to work on commission for the musician. The, um, that way I can make the instrument particularly uh, close to what the maker himself, uh, the, the musician himself is looking for. So each musician has his own way of playing, has his own ideas about sound, and has his own statue, his own technique, his own bowing, etc. And as, um, as a violin maker, we can react on that. We can choose particular materials, we can choose particular models, and we can use particular measurements and finishing of the instrument, which makes the instrument at that point completely personalized. Uh, it's like, like fashion, you can, you can make a jacket or a shirt made to fit the person and that makes it very pleasing to, um, to wear, and it's like a violin, particularly pleasing to play. Now this violin, um, as I already mentioned, is made with very old materials. The back is made of maple in two pieces, a very nice material, but not too deeply flamed, because the flame makes the wood weak again, and uh, if the flame is not too deep, the sound result will be better. The top is made of spruce. In this case, 
Um, one piece of spruce, which is a particularity that uh, other great Cremona makers used to, uh, to do also on their work very often. And um, it has a very regular narrow grain, but what's most important, it, is, it has been seasoned for almost 100 years before I started making this instrument. Uh, the model is an Antonio Stradivari model, but personalized to make the instrument uh, a little closer to what my idea is of, um, of a violin. And some details become at that point a really personal feature, like for instance the scroll. The scroll is the sculpture part of the violin which gives the violin maker the opportunity of distinguishing him uh, in his style. Obviously this style is inspired by Antonio Stradivari, but it should be recognizable um, as being an individual work. It's not a copy of an Antonio Stradivari. Um, the varnish of this instrument is very important. I use an all and completely oil varnish based on a, a very antique recipe uh, from the 17th century. This is extremely important for the sound of the instrument and also to protect the instrument for future use because we don't make the instruments just for today. We make them for the time to come. Uh, like today, we play all the antique instruments with much joy. Hopefully in the future, our instruments will be also be played with much joy, uh, not only for the musician, but also for the audience. I would like to ask uh, Maestro Siskovic at this point to play a last piece, if possible, still from Tartini on this violin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Maestro Siskovic. This was a great joy to hear you playing so beautifully. And I would like to also ask Maestro Barilli, please come and um, to uh, uh, ask you both, thank you both very much for playing uh, in this very beautiful uh, auditorium, which we all appreciate for the acoustics, but uh, also to make it possible to realize that the violins made today in Cremona are not only beautiful to look at, but also beautiful to listen at, and possibly also beautiful to play, I hope so. <laughs> Maestro Barilli always tells me that playing his viola in the Teatro Reggio Orchestra of Turin is always a great joy, and Maestro Siskovic uh, told me how nice it was to play his Heiliger's violin, and he found it so easy to play. So I invite you all to my workshop if you want to uh, commission a particularly made instrument, I'm willing to do so, I'm able to do so. My name is Heiligers, I have my workshop in Cremona, right next to the Violin Making Museum, and I've been making here instruments uh, for the last 45 years. Uh, I expect you all in my workshop. Thank you so much for the attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Heiligers of Heiligers 
violin house and thanks to the musician if you want to spend even more a couple of minutes because uh, you talk about your history your 45 years of history and your tailor-made uh, instrument we can call it in this way because uh, I think it's so important for a musician they demonstrate it how he's uh, simple to have a like a dress you made this uh, this metaphor like a dress for for their instrument i read somewhere on the website you can i th i hope confirm that you built an instrument directly during the lockdown maybe it's called opus correct that is true uh, i have made an instrument uh, during uh, this very dramatic lockdown that we have been through here in cremona um, Yes, I have passed two and a half months practically closed up in my house, and in that period, obviously, I didn't sit still. I, I have made um, two instruments. Uh, all my instruments are numbered, and that's why they call opus, opus yeah. number one, two, three, and, okay. and so forth. So, so the so question was, which was the feeling of building something, even if a period of loneliness and if a period of a lockdown of difficulty, when maybe the, the willing of, of build something can be more uh, more high than usual yes it's uh, it has been a very um, touchy period it has been a very dramatic period but i must say as a violin maker i was in the condition to uh, be more concentrated than usual the world became so much smaller uh, as the outside whatever was happening outside the door of my house did not exist anymore, that I got so much more concentrated on the work that I did, that at the end I had the feeling that this instrument was kind of part of me. Each instrument I make has this kind of feeling, but you are always distracted. You are distracted by whatever happens around you. Now this time nothing happened around me. I was completely concentrated on the making. So this instrument actually does have a little piece of my heart in it. And it was a very particular experience. Now I must say that um, tailor-made instrument, as you mentioned it, or custom-made, the way I call it, um, instruments is, is very nice to do. I am a musician myself. I was educated as a musician at the Conservatory of Parma. I studied there. Um, while I was studying also violin making with uh, Maestro Scolavezza. And um, studying to play the violin, I understood the violin um, very well. And the musicians seem to appreciate this very much. And I like it as a maker to work towards the musician. It seems that the, uh, the musician appreciates it very much to know that the violin maker is making something particularly and specially just for him. It's a very satisfying way of being a violin maker. Okay, perfect. So let's hope to hear also this new instrument soon. And uh, thank you all for being there. Thanks the people watching, connecting here, also for listening to these two wonderful musicians. And we will have a little break, then we will come back with another instrument and another lute here. Thank you very much. <laughs>